I had a friend of mine that used to say the transforming truths of God's word would destroy the crippling effects of religious tradition. We actually used it when we first started television back in 1988. We used it as a, uh, as a subtitle for, our, for empowered television. You know that God's word will really tear down religious stuff. And there's some religious stuff that we're tearing down in this series of messages called Invisible Stakes. I want you to stay with me. I'll be back in a few minutes. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 7 says that man is the image and the glory of God. The word image is representation. The word glory means the obvious or the manifestation of God. When people see us, what are they seeing? The scripture says that we're the representation of God. How well are you doing? No, wait, wait. When somebody would say something like this when I was a kid in church, they'd say, I hope you ain't smoking or drinking or cussing out there anywhere. I, I, I'll tell you, honestly, <clears throat> I'm not telling you to smoke, drink, or cuss, but I'm telling you that's probably one of the least problems that you could have. Yeah. Representing God. Jesus drank, by the way. He didn't get drunk, according to the Scriptures but he drank wine. He turned water into wine so other people could drink wine. Oh boy. <laughs> Ooh boy. Stuff's weird feeling now. And all the religious stuff is all getting kicked. All that religious crazy stuff's getting kicked around now, isn't it? I don't know about that now. I don't, oh, no, that's all right. Just read your own Bible, interpret it the way you want to, and stay staked down to wherever you might be. Let me tell you where the representation enters in. It's doing the works of Jesus. Right. Changing people's lives. Pulling people into the kingdom. Yeah. Witnessing to people. Yeah. Praying for people. Yeah. Doing the works of the Lord. Is anybody hearing any of this stuff? Right. That's a representation. What about a manifestation of Him? Well, what shows up when God shows up? His power shows up. His goodness shows up. His love shows up. His faith shows up. Is anybody following any of this? So he said, you were created to be the representation, the manifestation of God. We've spent so much time staked down to old religious junk, sometimes that it, it won't allow us to accompany God anywhere. I heard a preacher say probably 30 years ago on, on radio, it was back before it was much preaching on TV, I heard him say on radio, he said, people have been saying I'm going around the country preaching the Word of God and acting like Jesus. And he said they meant it in a bad way. He said, I took it in a good way because that's what we're supposed to be doing. When Oral Roberts back in the 50s and 60s proclaimed that God is a good God and they sang a song, God is a good God and His goodness He will show to you they, they, the religious people started criticizing them and telling their people, stay away from him. Really? Yeah. Let's stay staked down to something ignorant. Let's stay staked down to the ignorant idea that God's bad, that he's going to do something to hurt you, that he's going to mess you up. All of that's ignorance of the word of God. Oh, Jesus, I'll tell you, I just about feel like I could jump up on something today and preach some of this stuff. <clears throat> John 14 and verse 12, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. He that believeth on me. It's contingent upon that. And, 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 and here, <clears throat> Pastor, what are you talking about? You're talking about stakes. No, I'm, now I'm, I'm not talking about stakes now. I'm talking about accompanying God. I'm talking about accompanying Jesus. I'm done with the stake thing. You already got the stake up. Come on now. It's time to walk. Come on, do something. It's time to get up here with Jesus now. It's time to do something different than what you've been doing. I know you've been staked down for a long time. I know you've been in some religious idea, somebody else's thought pattern, but it's time to get over all of that, and it's time for you to get up and start doing what Jesus is doing. Amen. Accompany him. Company, accompany him. In Hebrews chapter 11, 
the Bible tells us about Abraham and how that he was 100 years old, 99 years old when God came to him. Sarah was 89 years old. They'd never had a child together. And God came to them and said, you're going to have a child this time next year. <clears throat> and uh, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 4 that Abraham didn't consider his body dead, reproductive-wise, or the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't consider either one of those things. Well, wait a minute, he's old. Yeah, I know he's old, but he didn't consider that. What did he consider? He was fully persuaded, the Bible said, that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. Yeah. Now, here, I, the reason I told you that about Abraham, because he's in the New Testament, he's called the father of them that believe. The father of faith, Old Testament and New Testament. Do you believe? Well, then you got Abraham as a daddy. Okay, I know God's our father. I'm, I'm aware of that. But the Bible calls him our faith daddy. He, he's our big faith daddy. <laughs> you, get, you get it? Some of you are following me. Some of you don't know. Go with me, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. I want you, I want you to see what some, some of the stuff that the Bible says about Abraham. Because if you understand that the Bible tells us that Abraham pleased God, that the Bible tells us that he was the father of them that believe, and the, the word believe there is the verb form of the word faith. It, it meant he put his faith in motion. He was doing something with his faith. So if, if Abraham gets all of this acclaim from the Old Testament all the way into the New Testament, you, you need to see what he did. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, that means having a right relationship with God, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Did you see that? If you're of faith. Now, the Scripture, verse 8 says, the Scripture foreseen that God would justify the heathen through faith, or people, that word heathen means people don't believe in God, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Now, you need to understand this, that Abraham was told to leave his country and his kinfolk, and the reason is because they served false gods. So God told him, I want you to get away from that. Now, Abraham could have said, well, no, this is what all my religious family friend believe, and so I'll just stay here with them. But the Bible said he got up and followed God's instruction. Now, what's that got to do with anything? Well, uh, you're told to, to follow God's instruction. In fact, you're told to accompany Jesus, the Christ. Okay. So then, verse 9 says, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Now, this word blessed, there's... there's two or three variances of where this word comes from. Two or three different Greek words. In the Old Testament, it comes from a word that is the same word as shalom, same definition as peace. And it means happiness, wellness, prosperity, favor, safety. Except there's one thing that is a, a little different edge on this word blessed. It not only means to invoke a blessing or to, to walk up to somebody and say, I decree today that you're healthy. See, God has the ability to do that. But it also means to point out in words how to be happy, well, prosperous, favored, and safe. We see that, if you've ever heard me teach on finances, we see that in the Old Testament where the Bible said, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. You mean God just comes by and says, be blessed? No, God tells you how to be blessed. Uh, he, he doesn't just come by and say, be wealthy. We don't find that anywhere in the Scripture. But we do find him showing people how to be wealthy. He, he tells them in Malachi chapter 3, if you bring all the tithe into the storehouse, I'll pour you out a blessing. What? H how to be happy, well, prosperous, favor, safe. Here, so here's, here's my question with this. Watch this. He so, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So my question is, what, it, what are you doing with the blessing? If I stand up here and tell you, you can go to the bank down here and tell them that Charles Vance sent you, they have a package that's got $1,000 in it, cash, 
It's got your name on it. Stop down and pick it up. He said, that's the craziest thing I ever heard. I ain't going down there and make a fool out of myself. Huh? So what if you walk in, the package is not there? Charles who? Believers shall call for the elders of the church. If there's any sick among you, let them lay hands on the sick. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. I ain't going up there. Well, if that don't work. Well, what if the, the envelope is waiting for you? What if this does work? You call for the elders. See, see, here's where we've missed a lot of things over the years, is we've been taught that we look foolish if we do something extreme and nothing results from it. I, listen, I hate to tell you all this, but most people think you're an idiot anyway. <laughs> Except for this group of people. <laughs> I can count on one hand the people that I think that are extraordinary. Maybe two hands. Why, why, are you, why do you care about what people think? <laughs> you know who you should be concerned about thinking about you? Almighty God. He has the power to bless you. They don't have the power to bless you. <laughs> he has the power to make good things happen in your life. They don't have the power to make good things happen in your life. Now watch as we go on here. Let's, let's do this. For, for as many... Verse 10, for as many as are the works of the law, uh, as, as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all the things that are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Watch. And the law is not of faith. This is talking about the Mosaic law, the thou shalt not, the Ten Commandments, and all the other commandments. He said, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live by them. Verse 13 is the redemption for you. For Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham, there's that word again, blessing, the happiness, wellness, prosperity, favor, safety. Somebody said, well, no, God just blessed Abraham. Baloney. God told Abraham, get up, and he got up. God told Abraham, leave your kinfolk. He left his kinfolk. God told Abraham, get out of your country. He got out of his country. God told him to walk to, the, to, to what we know now, well, what used to be, the first back years and many years ago, what used to be Israel. He said, I want you to walk completely around this place and everywhere your feet trod belongs to you. And, God, and Abraham walked completely around the place. When God came to Abraham and said, you're going to have a baby? Next year at this time, without getting graphic, Abraham acted like he was going to have a baby. Right. Oh, Jesus, help me get this somehow into people's hearts and spirit today. If, if you're going to get the reward, you've got to follow Jesus, accompany him. You can't just pull the stake up. There's got to be something that you do that activates his blessing, him pointing out to you. Wait, wait, wait. He, I, I, a lot of you know things that you should do that you're not doing them that would cause happiness, wellness, prosperity, favor, safety come in your life. <clears throat> I've met with husbands and wives too many to want to even remember over the years. I started pastoring full-time in 1994. And, and uh, I, I've met with so many husbands and wives that would sit and say, uh, I'm, I'm not doing, I'm not, I'm not apologizing until he apologizes. I'm not apologizing until she apologizes. Wait, just a minute. You know what to do. What did you do that caused you all to fall in love with each other? Well, he used, he used to bring me flowers. Well, what did you used to do? I used to make him breakfast and take it to him. I, I, I remember driving all the way across town bringing breakfast to him one day. What, what are you doing now? Nothing, because he don't do nothing for me. You know what to do. 
and you're not doing it. I wonder how many people God has told you how to prosper and you ain't done a thing about it. How many people God has told you how to be healthy and you've not done a thing about it. Oh, don't, don't think that the devil tells you to exercise. I, 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 I know you call it the demon meal or whatever, the, tre- the dread meal. Or I, know, I understand, but don't think the devil's going to tell you to, to quit eating so much fatty foods and donuts. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. What are you doing with the blessing? So they that be of faith, verse 9, are blessed with faithful Abraham. Let me concentrate just for a few minutes, the last few minutes here, on the blessing. Again, it's defined as benediction. If you look up the word benediction, it's talking about pronouncing or point out, pointing out in words happiness, wellness, prosperity, favor, safety. The blessing of God is to teach you how to live happy, to, to teach you how to be well, to teach you how to prosper, to teach you how to have favor and how to be safe. Abraham believed God, and God gave him instruction after instruction to be blessed. And now, because of the grace of God, the Bible said that the blessing of Abraham has come on people that were not Jewish, the Gentile people. That's us. Now God tells us. He's not keeping a secret. He's telling us how to do this. I want you to go to Isaiah 48 with me. I told you a few weeks ago, and some of you were here and some of you weren't. Anytime you read Old Testament prophets, almost always those prophets were talking to the Jewish people when they were in exile. Almost always. Um, And there's no difference with the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is talking to the, the Jewish people, the people of Judah and Jerusalem. He's talking to them while they are exiled in Babylon, what we know as present day Iraq. They were there. Babylon was, it had a a place where they had built extraordinary buildings. The Tower of Babel was built close by to the city of Babylon. They had hanging uh, hanging gardens that that was one of the seven ancient wonders of the world. They were a world empire. They had taken over the known world at the time, the Babylonians. So they came in and took Jerusalem, tore the city down, tore the walls down, tore the temple down, took all the gold out of the temple, carried it off to Babylon. And and a few years later, after, and and you need to understand um, that there were several thousand people that were carried off, most of them nobles, most of them brilliant people or children of brilliant people. They wanted them in their kingdom to train them of their ways. Uh, I don't know if you know it or not, but America brought German scientists to America after World War II, after Hitler was defeated, and and gave them freedom here in our country, thousands of them in our country, so that they could work for America now. That sounds a little dangerous to me, but you can think however you want to. They had these people in exile doing the same thing with them. Now, I want you to notice the instruction that that Isaiah gives to Israel while they're in captivity. Read with me Isaiah 48, verse 16. Come ye near unto me. Well, that right there is good because the Bible says if you draw near to God, hmm. come near to me, hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the from the beginning, from the time that it was. There I am, and now the Lord God and His Spirit hath sent me. This is Isaiah talking. He said, "Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel: I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go." First of all, that almost seems ridiculous that these people are in exile basically what we would call prisoners of war. And, and he said, look, I'm the Lord your God that teaches you to profit. 
That, that word profit, by the way, it means to ascend or to be valuable, to, to be benefited, to set forward, to be profitable, to have a profit. So he said, I'm the Lord thy God which teacheth thee to profit and which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, oh that thou hadst hearkened unto my commandments or paid attention to my commandments. Then had thy peace been like a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Look, look at that again. Verse 17, Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, and which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Isn't it amazing that while they were in a place of exile, while they were in a mess, God gave them instructions how to be blessed. Sometimes you think you're in a mess. I don't know what I'm going to do to get out of this. Let me give you a solution. Come near to me. <laughs> That's what the Word says. Come on, let's walk together. I already gave you the power to pull up the stake. Now, come on. You're free from that, but you can't just stay there in that same place. Oh, I don't know all the people that's done all the stuff that's happened. He said, come on over here. Come near to me. We're going to walk somewhere. together. I'm going to lead you where you need to go. Amen. According to the Jewish encyclopedia, 12,000 men plus women and children were exiled to Babylon. Seventy years later, Cyrus, king of Persia, it was a world empire taking over the Babylonian empire, released the people of Judah to return and rebuild Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. There were approximately 42,000 men in Babylon at the time. That's how much they had, had grown in Babylon at the time of their release. The book of Ezra says there was only 18,000 men or 1,800 men plus women and children that went back to Jerusalem when they were released. I wonder how many people have pulled up her stake and they're still just standing there. So that's only half the instruction. The other half is, I want to lead you somewhere. The only way I can lead you is for you to follow me, accompany me. you got to go with me. You, you, you can't just stay here in this same place. There's no doubt that God has blessed the believer. What do you mean Blessed. I'm, I'm talking about he's given you instruction on how to be happy, well, prosperous, favored, safe. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, Paul writes this at the, the entire church, the entire church at Ephesus, and he said, blessed be the God, that word blessed there means adored, adored be the God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Past tense, it's in the aorist tense in the Greek, which means it was just like that and it was done. He has taught every one of us, how did he do that? He's taught every one of us how to be happy, well, prosperous, favored, and blessed. The thing is, are you staying where you used to be staked? The question still remains, what are you doing with the blessings? Are you accompanying Jesus? Have you pulled up the stakes? Are you accompanying Jesus? If you've pulled up the stakes, are you allowing him to teach you to profit? Remember, Jesus said you could live the abundant life. God's plan for you is to prosper. Not to harm you, to give you a hope, to give you a future. And remember, if you pull up the stakes and stand still, you just as well be staked up to something. Just as well be chained down to a stake again. And, and if you only follow part of Jesus' in, in, instruction, the, re, the reason Jesus said to pull up the invisible stakes, the whole reason he told you to do that was so you could accompany him where he was going. Let me tell you something. God don't get in trouble and stay in trouble. He don't get in a mess and stay in a mess. So wouldn't it make sense to be with him instead of just hanging around your old stake? The reason Jesus said to pull up the invisible stakes was so you could follow him and start thinking like him. 
You hang around him long enough, you'll think like him. You hang around him long enough, you'll start talking like him. You, you hang around him long enough, you'll start acting like him. And you'll start believing like him. And when you start believing like him, you'll start seeing results like him. Thank you for joining me on the program today. Always great to have you along. You've been watching this uh, portion of a, a, just a piece of this message series called Invisible States. If you haven't ordered it yet, let me encourage you to order the entire series. Get it, listen to it over and over again. It's on CD, but you can stick it in your computer and rip it to whatever you want and take it on in your car or wherever and listen to this over and over again until you really get it down deep inside. And when you do, it is going to transform your life. You can order by going to our website, calling the number that's on the screen, or just writing. Thank you for ordering the products. The money goes back into ministry. You're helping us make a positive impact in people's lives around the world. If you're being blessed by the ministry here at Empowered, help us be a blessing to others by sowing a seed this month. Watch this. Empowered Ministries is dedicated to reaching our world with the love of Jesus Christ. Your financial support is helping us extend God's grace to the multitudes and empowering us to reach the lost, heal the sick, feed the hungry, and to bring hope to the hopeless. Through Empowered Television, we're impacting nations by teaching believers to thrive in their calling and to live successful, powerful, and productive lives. If you're being blessed by the ministry here at Empowered, you can help us continue to do the works of Jesus by sowing a seed this month. With your gift of any size, you'll receive our monthly partner letter. And with your gift of $41 or more, we will also include a special teaching by Pastor Charles Vance that will take your faith to another level. When you become an EMT partner, you are helping us transform lives around the world. And we believe what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Thank you so much for your gifts of support. We appreciate you more than words can tell. We're praying for you every day. I want to pray with those of you who are not born again or not sure about your relationship with God. I want you to know Jesus loves you, has an extraordinary plan for your life. Right now is your time. That's what the Bible says. You, you're watching this program on purpose. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say it out loud. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus into my life. I confess him as my Lord, my master. I believe he died for my sins and Father, you raised him from the dead. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, minute from your heart, welcome to the family of God. We put together a get started packet for new Christians. It's our gift to everyone that's prayed with us today. You can get yours by going to our website, charlesvance.org, press the New Believers tab, fill out the information, you get that packet right back out in the mail to you, and then get in a faith-based church somewhere, and always remember, stay in the Word. You will stay empowered.